and we got tremendous great ideas, things we've already implemented in place within the organization. So this is one thing we tried. Now the good thing about this is it sent a message to the company. But this is a one-time event. So again, the trick here is how do you make it sustainable? So our next step, which was coming out of the Impact Jam, is we um, worked with our solution partners within the information services team. And Ken's in the back, if he's still here, not falling asleep, who helped me with this. Um, and we put forward a Spigot platform, which is a collaboration platform. Spigot's the company that we purchased the software from. But we wanted to create this sustainable platform for collaboration in that same open, transparent format. One of the things I didn't mention about the jam, no preview of the posts. People can talk. We had one statement up front which said, hey, guys, remember that code of ethics? We expect you to stick to it and dialogue professionally. If you don't, we're going to hold you accountable. We had no issues. We had no issues whatsoever. We had tremendous participation. So now we have this platform called Impact Ideas. And the reason we have this impact theme is about um, almost two years ago, one of our broader corporate change efforts is called Impact US, which is redefining our commercial model. So we pulled the kind of the branding through, if you will. But this is basically a platform that anybody can go into and submit their idea. A very loose kind of business criteria just to say, here's the impact from a customer level or from an operational level that we think we can get. And others can vote on it. They can say, hey, that's a really good idea. Or that's a really bad idea. Or I tried that. Let me add some information that I learned that you may want to consider. And we screen these. And we look for popular votes. But we also have, we have a junior management committee that goes through and looks at all the different ideas. And we're going to sponsor the best ones at the executive level. So not only can the people bring the ideas forward, but they get to participate in being part of that solution. And we'll sponsor that with funding and with time. And we'll use that as the primary basis for our recognition awards on an annual basis. This has been extremely well received. We've had tremendous participation again. And in fact, again, from a sustainability perspective, it led to the next thing. And we, we just tried this uh, about two weeks ago. So we tried our first prediction market. I'd love to tell you I'm an expert on prediction markets, and we've been doing it forever, and it's so we've got it down. We don't know what we're doing. But you know, I read Sir Wiki's Wisdom in the Crowds. It's pretty interesting. And the idea here is if you go with this concept that the best ideas are with your employees and your customers, let's test that out a little bit. This is an example question. But we're doing this right now in one of our geographic areas. So we have a large sales team. They have about 20 questions that they're betting on. We're encouraging betting within the organization. I said, <laughs> that's on mic, that's on tape. They get these points called spigots. And they have a dollar value. We have incentive point programs. And people will get rewarded for the best idea portfolio performance at the end of the project. But what we want to do is drive a level of engagement with all the people involved and see what kind of feedback they have. And the reason we're doing the jam and impact ideas and, and now impact predict, we also have an eye towards our next step is we want to bring this external. Yes, we want to bring this external outside with actual customers who may talk back to us. But that's the goal. But we had to figure out how to do it internally first before we ran out and really tripped too hard on our face with customers. But we see we're learning as we go. So there's a great way to get those ideas and kind of bring those ideas forward within the organization. But we've had a stepwise kind of deliberate approach as you go. And I've found that to be particularly useful. So just a learning I'm sharing with the team. Here's a couple of resources. And I know they're going to share the slides. So basically, two that I've found I rely on quite often. I, I, I really like this Innosight company. You know, when I got deemed the innovation guy in terms of my new job about 18 months ago, I learned, much like social media and digital, there's a lot of self-proclaimed innovation experts. And it really helped for me to admit right up front that I had no idea what I was doing. But I could just go out and learn and listen and try things. And I like Christensen's work. For me, it's simple. It's easy. And, and there's some really interesting things if you want to dig into that. They have a great blog um, in a blog. So they, they give regularly updated, good, clear case examples of things people are doing in companies, what's working and what's not. I found it useful. And if you're a fan of Blue Ocean, the two kind of complement each other very nicely. In fact, you'll see as you dig a little bit deeper how some of the mapping of opportunities complement each other. So I just mentioned, and Blue Ocean also has a, a blog that you can reference on a regular basis. It's amazing what you can do when you figure out how to use Google Reader. And for me, it's been a tremendous resource. So um, share a couple of these. A few other things that we've tried. And if, if anyone's seen Robert Kriegel, this is a high energy guy. Right? We had him come in to our home office. We had to meet with the field organization. Here's the link on Amazon. No, I'm not getting paid for referrals. But if you want to pick up his book, 
What, what Robert talks about is challenging paradigms within organizations. And he does it through a balance of really good, specific examples and just the level of energy that few can have. So it's a fun presentation that even the most uh, conservative people I've seen really respond to. One of the key takeaways from his talk when he came and spoke to us was this idea when you're bringing new ideas forward, there's always somebody in the company. And guess what? It's not always legal and regulatory, guys. I've had more commercial people tell me no in the last 18 months than I have some of the folks that are supposedly the bad people holding everyone back. So it's something we need to look across all aspects. But when you bring a new idea forward, he calls them fire hoses because they just turn that stream on of no and just mow you down, right? And he suggested, you know, just buy water pistols. And as soon as they start to fire hose, hit them back. So guess what? We did that. And we went through our innovation sessions. We had water pistols on the table. And I keep one in my office loaded. <laughs> so I tell people when they come to see me, I just set it down. They say, what's that? I said, you'll know. You'll see. So it's a little thing. It's a little takeaway that we took from one talk that a gentleman gave that we now kind of use on an ongoing basis. So that, that's worked pretty well. I, I got this. Someone tweeted this. And I picked it up. I love this. This is from Idea Sandbox. The URL's down the bottom. But this is, to me, again, simple, but boy, does this thing work. So this is Idea Killer Bingo, if you haven't seen this before. You can print these out. I would encourage you to have a little box in front of every meeting room if you have to spend most of your days in meetings, which are not the most productive things. Hand these out. Have people play. It's amazing. It's fun. It works. And it's another way to drive this perspective of thinking differently within an organization. Again, a really simple tool that you can use. So we're trying these little things, but one caution, and you have to look at this, especially, again, because change initiatives are not campaigns. You need to be there for the long term if you're really serious about realizing the benefits, especially if you're talking about being customer-centric in your approach, which is what you're hearing a lot of people speak of but in terms of practicing, it takes a long-term commitment. You've got to watch out for this, OK? If you are flavor of the month, nothing will change, a cha nothing will kill, excuse me, a change initiative faster than a flavor of the month, month approach. So if you don't tie it back to some sustainable effort, use some of these other things to complement the effort, like the water guns and idea killer, but show people you're being consistent and give them a chance to move ahead you're going to be much more likely to succeed. But it's easy to get caught up in the enthusiasm of the next greatest thing and walk away from your core fundamental change initiative. So just be careful with that. And it's something that I find even we need to kind of go back and just check, does this align with our, our approach, our objective? Does it complement it? If so, great, if we can make it sustainable. But let's not confuse people, right? Simple. Simple equals results.